We offer you Escape, starring Victor Mature. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You were camped in the dry mountains of Mexico. A hundred yards from a treasure and buried gold, a beautiful girl is sitting across the fire with a gun. And somewhere out in the night, a horseman waits like the girl for you to make just one mistake. Tonight, with Victor Mature as Toby Manning, we escape to Mexico with a story of conflict between love and the lust for gold. As Jeffrey Household told it in The Fortune of Vargas from his exciting novel, The Third Hour. It was dark and hot. The tropic night air was like warm steam. Night sounds drifted over from the dock. And from the native quarter of Panama City, I stood outside the hotel entrance and looked up at the lighted window on the third floor where Bately was waiting. After tonight, I hoped I'd never see his ugly face again. Somewhere, somehow, I... I had to make the break. Okay, okay, you can have your three weeks off. But you'll never do it. You haven't got the guts to break away. Faithfully, it doesn't take guts to break away from a lousy job peddling mining machinery in Latin America. Now, look, Toby. You could be South American manager in ten years if you'd settle down and work at it. And stop beating your head against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in 25 years I could retire and drop dead. Look, all I need is one right break, and I'll take it from there. Any kind of a break. You need more than a break, Toby. If one fell right in your lap, you'd play it just so far, and then you'd start doubting yourself. Or somebody else. And that's what would beat you. Maybe so. But I've got the next three weeks. Now, look. Every time I come to Panama, you say you're going to quit. Every time you tell me a big chance for real money is just around the corner. Why don't you get wise to you? All right, all right. Lay off of me, will you, Bakley? Report to me in New York on the 29th. I'll lay out your new schedule for you. Don't count on it. You'll be there, all right. I'll give you odds on it. I'll bet you don't do a thing except sit in the sun for the next three weeks. Sit in the sun for three weeks. That would suit Bigley fine. To see me come crawling back again. Well, I didn't have a definite plan, but I knew I'd keep on the move. I was so fed up with Fatley, the job, mining machinery, I'd have jumped at anything. A guy in a mood like that can get into plenty of trouble. And three days later, I found it. Gracias, al Dios. Bienvenido, Senor Manning. Welcome back to Colón and to the Café Madrid. Hi, Emmanuel. What's new? New. Pues nada, amigo. The world grows older, but that is not new. <laughs> Here. The entese, amigo. Sit down, sit down. Thanks. How's this? Say, the place is empty. Well, see, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but never it is interesting, senor. In fact, I have said to myself, with a life of this kind, I am, uh, uh, yeah, how do you call it? Set up? Hey, <laughs> see, senor. Yeah, so am I. Look, why don't we team up and start a revolution somewhere? Ay, caramba. I was in one once in Mexico. I was a capitan with General Lara. No, we were defeated. Lara? Well, I was ambushed somewhere around Torreon, wasn't he? Si, sí, amigo. We were outnumbered and he was killed. But I was more lucky. I walked 300 kilometers to the sea coast, escaped on a Dutch freight ship. Ay, caramba. I hope I will never do that again. Yeah, I hope so, too. You know, there's not much profit in revolution. All right, let me have a raw manual. Si. Here you are, senor. Thanks. You are wrong about the revolution, Senor Manny. In Mexico with General Lara, I made a fortune like a man never dreams about. <laughs> Enough to open this cafe? Look, I don't call that a fortune. Senor Manning, in Mexico is one half million dollars in gold, which belonged to me. A half a million bucks? Yeah, 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 sure. It is true, amigo, I swear it. You uh, would take a little chance for that much, perhaps, huh? 
Perhaps. Bueno, bueno. Then we are going to have a talk tonight. I have already decided that before you come here this time. I don't get it. What do you mean? Why do you think I ask questions from you always when you come here, huh? You tell me. Because I wish to find out if you are the right man for the plan I have. I have decided that you are, bueno. Well, then. Let's talk. Tonight, at my castle. Why not now? You think there is no danger for one who knows the secret of fortune? One must be careful. A fortune? The big chance. Come on, Manuel. Let's get over to your casa and start dealing the cards. I tell you, Senor Manning, everything works according to the plan which General Lara has made. The dynamite explodes and the train is wrecked. Our men break open the freight cars and load the pack horses and ride for the rendezvous at Torreon. Everybody except to you and uh, General Lara, was that it? Si, Senor. Yeah. We are the only ones who know of the shipment of gold which is secretly on board. We find it, of course, load our horses and head north to the hills with the Federalists close behind us. At nightfall, we bury the gold and ride for Torreon. And four days later, and there are Lara is killed. And I escape, as I tell you. And the gold is still there. A half a million dollars worth? Si, senor. And I am the only man who knows where to find it. But if I enter Mexico, I will be executed within 24 hours. That is why I need a partner. You've got one. Only one thing, amigo. Do not think that there will be no danger. In Mexico are thousands of bandidos who will cut your throat for one-tenth as much money. And on the other hand, a half a share in a fortune, a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> I'd shoot the works for a whole lot less than that. Bueno, bueno. Then I will explain to you how to find the fortune. What is it? Cuidado. I hear somebody move outside the window. Vamos a ver. Careful, Manuel. Manuel, away from that door. Here, let me get the lights off. There. Did you see who it was? No. I think the shot come from the bushes across from the door. Well, maybe we'd better take a look. Let's get to the door fast and step to the side. You got your gun? Si, senor. Okay. Let's go. I do not hear anything, senor. No. And it's as black as a hat. I'm going across, Manuel. Keep me covered. Bueno. Nobody there, amigo? No. Whoever it was must have run down the alley there as soon as they fired. Hey, you got any ideas? Pues no, amigo. Look, Manuel, if nobody but you and Laura knew about this gold, and Laura is dead, then how come the shot? And why have you been packing a gun? Uh, Senor Melling, when there is a treasure so big as this, it is possible that even the coyotes can smell it. You still wish to go on? Yeah. I still wish to go on. Three days later, on the train between Mexico City and Durango, I got a few of the answers. Or thought I did. The coach had been empty most of the way, except for a couple of soldiers up ahead and a few Indians near the back. I was busy watching for some of the landmarks Varga had given me, so I didn't pay much attention to the Mexican girl who came in and sat down in the seat opposite me. That is, not until she spoke. Senor, you're wasting your time. It's three kilometers farther yet. Mm, what? The place where the train was wrecked. I said we're not there yet. <laughs> Honey, I don't think I know what you're talking about. Oh, you're lying. You know well enough. And do not call me Honey, senor. My name is Consuela. Consuela? Mm, that's a pretty name, honey. Do not play the fool with me. Manuel Vargas tell you where he hide the gold, so do not lie to me. Oh. So it was you out there in the bushes with the gun that night. <laughs> you know, you're a bum shot. I do not try to hit somebody. I only shoot to have the chance to get away. You are a fool if you think because I am a woman, I am weak. I know all the tricks of men. They are perros, dogs, all of them. And I would not trust one that far. Okay, honey, take it easy, take it easy. I spent a long time to find Manuel in Cologne. I watched him. But I learned nothing until you come. 
And now I am here for my one half share of the gold. What do you mean? Your half? General Lara was my father. Mm, so that's your right. Well, uh, you have to work that out with Varga. I don't know anything about it. I am telling you now. You still think I'm a silly girl who can do nothing, huh? Look, senor. All right, look. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice gun. Now, you better put it back now. You see, honey, if you shoot me, you'd have no one to lead you to the gold. I know where it is. You don't. Si, senor. So you lead me to it. And don't forget, I'm very good at shooting. Okay, honey. For the time being, count yourself in. Gracias. But have no mistake, senor. I shall take my share of this gold, even if I must kill you to get it. You understand? Sure, I understand. We'll argue about that later. And something else, senor. Yes? Do not call me honey. <laughs> Bueno, senor. Todo esto listo? Yeah, I guess we're ready to pull out. How about it, Consuelo? Sí, senor. Whenever you wish. Well, thanks a lot for your trouble, senor Pascual. Uh, Say, you know, it looks like you've rented us five of the best horses in Durango. Yes, nada. It's very bad country where you are gone, senor. Perhaps you would like to hire a guide. Huh? No, thanks. I, I know that country pretty well. But, of course, seguro. And you are going to call it the mine. You and the senorita and sell machinery, verdad? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think you need a guide, senor. Some of the mines are very hard to find, especially the gold mines. Gold mines? Oh, well, as uh, far as I know, it's all lead and silver country up there. Well, see, mostly it is, but there is an old saying, gold is where you find it, verdad? Vamos, no, senor, we're wasting time. This man would be of no help to us. How do you know? Ever seen him before? Of course not. Why you ask? Just wondered... We've never seen him before. Vamonos, senor. Come on. Okay, hurry. Adios, senor. Uh, Vamonos. Goodbye, my children. Oisa Fanchito, have my horse ready to live at once. I'm going to take a little trip. <laughs> are listening to Escape, starring Victor Mature. Tonight's a big night on CBS, for the welcome mat is out for two of radio's greatest shows, The Bing Crosby Show and The Return of Burns and Allen. In just a little while, over many of these same stations, Der Bingle will be on hand with his songs, his humor, and his guests, comedian Abe Burroughs and Peggy Lee. Right after Bing's housewarming, George and Gracie will keep the celebration going with the first of their new series. So stay with us tonight for Bing Crosby and for Burns and Allen and their opening shows on CBS, where this fall you hear them all. And now back to Escape, starring Victor Mature. We camped at dusk about a quarter of a mile from the spot where the train had been dynamited. Vargas had given me directions, starting from there. After we ate, I lit a cigarette and rolled up my blanket and watched Consuela across the fire. She was worth watching. I kept wondering about several things. But mostly, who the horseman was who had been following us all day. I'd seen the dust cloud hanging back a mile or so behind us ever since we left Durango. I didn't say anything about it to Consuela. I still hadn't decided what I was going to do about it. I figured I was fairly safe from her or from anybody else until the minute I tipped off the location of the goal. And right then, when the picture would change, and change plenty. Senor Manny, why you stare at me like this? Just wondering some things. Things? What things? Mm, with a girl like you would... Really kill me? Just for gold? I do not trust anybody, senor. All right. But let's drop the senor. Make it Toby, huh? You wish. You 
is of no matter to me. <laughs> Toby. Look, suppose I made a deal with you. String along and don't start any trouble until I get the gold of New York. Then if you're really Laura's daughter, I'll try to get Vargas to agree on a three-way split. One third for each of us. What do you say? I think I do not like it. In New York, I will be in strange place. Here I'm at home. Here, too, I have gone. Quien sabe? Well, think it over anyway. It's your best bet. I'm going to turn in now. We'll start early in the morning. Wait. See, I'm... I will think it over. But... Senor... Toby? Yeah? I... I wish you to know that I do not trust you either. Okay, honey. I do not trust anybody. You understand that? Sure, sure, I understand. Good night, Consuelo. The second day out, the traveling was ten times as rough. And all day long, the same dust cloud stayed with us, following a mile or so behind. I knew there'd have to be a showdown sooner or later, but not yet. When we finally made camp at nightfall, I was dripping with sweat and dog towel, and Consuelo was slumped in her saddle. All of Manuel's landmarks had checked out during the day, and although she didn't know it, the gold was supposed to be buried within a hundred yards of our camp. This was the night to trim the cat's claws. I was counting on one thing, that she couldn't stay awake two nights in succession. And I was right. By two hours after dark, with the full moon barely above the horizon, Consuelo was sound asleep. I slid out of my bedroll and moved quietly around the fire towards her. I knew the gun was under the blanket at her head. So I bent over her and slowly, gently slipped my hand under her and found it, eased it out into the open inch by inch, and dropped it into my pocket. I'd forgotten about her knife until it glinted in the moonlight. She leaped from the ground and came for me. Bruna, Bruna, I lunged for her wrist, grabbed her, and hung her up no. while she struggled, twisted, fought like a panther. As small as she was, I could hardly hold her. I couldn't get hold of her other hand. And I wondered if the life might slip loose at any second. Back and forth, we fought in the moonlight, stumbling and slipping, but staying on our feet. I could see only one thing to do. I pulled her towards me, bent her arm back, and twisted. Drop it, Cantwell. Drop that no. knife. No. Drop that knife. Sorry. You shouldn't have. You should have dropped it. You broke my arm. No, it's only sprained. Better than being cut to ribbons the way I'd have been. Why are you waste time talking? You think I'm afraid to die? You're wrong. You have the gun, you have my knife. Go ahead, kill me. Why you wait? Wait a minute. Where do you get this idea I'm going to kill you? Well, why don't you wait for me to sleep and steal my gun? Oh, you silly little fool. Look, I was trying to make sure you wouldn't take a shot at me after we located the gold tomorrow. You were not going to kill me? Of course not. Look, why don't you get smart and find out you can trust somebody once in a while? Now, wake up now and get some sense in your head. Your hands off I'll me. shake some sense into you if I have to... Yes, you're hurting me. Why you look like that? You... You little devil. You complain now. Why are you going to... No! Here's your knife. But you have mind you take it away from me. I know, I know, I know. But look, you better keep it for protection. I do not understand. Never mind. Just, just take it. Oh. Gracias, señor. Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn in now. And uh, look, you'd better get some sleep, too. we got a tough day to borrow. And honey, if you decide to cut my throat during the night, make a clean a job of it. Toby, 
Are you awake? Toby? Yeah. <laughs> Buenas noches, Toby. <laughs> Maybe I was a fool to give her back the knife Still, if she wanted to kill me, it wouldn't make any difference She could knock my head in with a rock while I was asleep just as easy I'd never known a woman like her At ten o'clock the next morning, we found the gold Toby, there's no more? No, it's all on the pack horse. Now look, starting right now, we're going to ride hard until we hit the Nazis River. Somebody's been following us ever since we left Durango. What? Why you know this? I don't know who it is or why. Maybe you do. I? How could I know? Toby, I swear I do not. Okay, okay, here. Now look, you better take your gun back. You may need it in case we get separated. Separated? I'm going to stay with the gold. Sure you are, but you better take the gun anyway. Now, come on, let's go. Mile after mile, we pushed our horses on the trail to the north, riding most of the day over broken basalt rock to hide our trail. There was no dust cloud to show whether anyone followed, but I was sure somebody did. I was hoping to reach the Nazis River before the showdown came. I knew there was only a rope bridge over the narrow gorge, and once across, I would cut the ropes and close off any further chance of being followed. So we pushed the horses and rode, hour after hour. By late afternoon, Consuelo complained more and more of being tired, wanted to stop and rest. And I couldn't be sure she wasn't trying to slow us down. Two hours after dark, we reached the river. Glad I'm so tired. You're not alone, honey. <laughs> Lucky there's a moon. This thing's no sense to cross in the dark. It looks very weak. It's only held up by rope. It's safe enough. Whoa, boy. Whoa, now. Whoa, whoa. Uh, ah, here. Hold my horse. I'll lead the pack animals across on foot. Toby. Be careful. Are you worried about me? Or the gold? Hurry, please. Take them across. Wait. I think that will not be necessary, senor. You will put up your hand. Do not move. Can you see him? He's in the shadow, right by the bridge. It's Pasquale, that guy in Durango. Were you expecting him? Toby, I swear to you that... Bastante, senor. You will drop your pistol on the ground. Very slowly, please. <laughs> Gracias. It was very kind of you to discover the gold for me. How did you know we were looking for it? Oh, I forgot to tell you, in Durango. I'm Sergente Alberto Pasquales, formerly with the 4th Regiment of General Lara in the Army of the Revolution. One of my father's soldiers. Uh, for five years, I have waited for Captain Vargas to come back for the fortune, which I knew he had stolen. Stand out in the moonlight, please. Bastante, that's far enough. Now I lead the horses across the bridge, and then I cut the rope so that you cannot follow me. If you move, I will have to kill you. Toby. Quiet and don't move. It does not know I have a gun. No, Consuela. No! No, don't! Don't! I had you move! The pack horses reared at the shot. I lunged to stop them, stumbled into Consuela, grabbed her, and held on to keep her from falling. The half-mad animals carried Pasqualis out onto the bridge and drove him along in further pounding hooves. I heard the rope supports creak and groan, and then snap with a loud crack, and like slow motion, the whole end of the bridge gave way. Pasqualis and the three pack horses loaded with gold had plunged down into the gorge below. Toby. Toby. I'm hurt. Very bad. Hurt? What do you mean? When he shot, I feel the bullet here. No, easy now. Look, you're going to be all right. Now, don't worry. No. No. I'm not afraid to die. Toby? Yeah. I, I like it very much. 
can you call me, honey? Sure, honey. I'll be calling to that thousands of times. Well, I'll be... Consuelo! Consuelo! I knelt there in the moonlight holding her in my arms with the bare brown hills of Mexico around me and cursed myself for a fool. The gold was gone, lost in the torrent at the bottom of the gorge. But it didn't seem to matter very much. I'd found a greater treasure. And because I had too little faith, that treasure lay dead in my arms. I lowered her gently and sat there for a long time. Then I picked up the gun she died trying to use. The empty gun I'd taken the cartridges out of because I didn't trust her and threw it into the gorge. Then I dropped down on the ground and wept. I remembered Bately's words. You need more than a break, Toby. If one fell right in your lap, you'd play it just so far. And then you'd start doubting yourself or somebody else. I told you you'd show up, Toby. You even got here a day early. Yeah, I know, Bailey. Well, let's settle up my schedule. You must have had yourself quite a vacation. You didn't find the big chance, did you? No, I didn't find it. Well, what'd you do? Just sit around in the sun for three weeks? Come on, tell me about it. Didn't anything happen? That's right, Bailey. You hit it square on the head. Nothing happened. Not a thing. Escape was produced and directed by Gordon T. Hughes. With Victor Mature starring as Toby Manning, tonight we have presented The Fortune of Vargas, adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield. Victor Mature will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Wabash Avenue. Next week, we escape with Van Heflin, starring in Joseph Hergesheimer's terrifying story, Wild Oranges. Good night, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape, starring Van Heflin. CBS, where Bing Crosby can be heard every Wednesday night. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>